Hello, this is Liz. Welcome to my little urban homestead and welcome to Fabric Friday. Uh, back to quilting this week and we're going to do, well, I'm going to do <laughs> uh, free motion quilting. And what I've got here, let me take these pins out, I've already started, but I didn't have the camera going, is a piece of fabric any type of fabric, cotton base, then some wadding. I use polyester wadding, gives me a nice higher loft. And another piece of fabric. And then I've got these pins, I think I've showed you them before, the curved ones, which are for quilting and just attach those three pieces together. Now this is ideal for a practice sheet just to have a go at free motion quilting but I don't, I don't like practice for practice sake I need to use the thing afterwards so I've got a um, plan in mind for this and I'll probably show you as well so that if you practice on something like this then you can make it afterwards now the wadding batting is a little bit bigger but the fabric is roughly 16 inches by 22 inches roughly that size do any size you want but that's what I'm using for this one and I'll take you over to the same machine now and show you uh, setting it up. Uh, as you know, I've got this extension table, a couple of sides of a uh, wardrobe. Slide it back out of my way. And down here, see my hand? I hope you can get that. This is your plate you say machine and down here there is a button that you go to one side or the other and it will raise and lower your feed dogs. So that's, that's why I had this so it was movable so I can do that. It needs raising up a touch. But now I'll show you about changing the feet. Now I'm going to be using this darning foot today and I'll show you how you change it. You've got your universal foot on there. You can drop the foot itself off and then, I'm sorry if my hand's in the way, but I need to unscrew it. And as you can see, it just comes off. Make sure you put it somewhere where you don't lose it. <laughs> the screw is still in. Slide the darning foot on and you'll see your needle comes in the middle of the hole. Get your screwdriver and tighten it up. Because the last thing you want happening is as you're going along the foot comes off. I've never done it myself but I shouldn't imagine it will do your sewing machine much good at all. Right, so we've got the foot on, we've threaded it as we would normally do, we've dropped the feed dogs if you cannot drop your feed dogs, try and move your stitch length to zero or as close to zero as you can get. And then see if you could cover them with something. A lot of machines, even the older ones, I've got some, uh, well, the vintage new home that uh, I use, 
I could um, raise and lower the feed dogs there. So it is a feature on a lot of machines. But make sure you are on a straight stitch. The stitch length, as I say, take it down to zero or as close to it as you can get. I've got one of these sliders that I use when I'm doing quilts. Get your work. Slide it under. And for something small and that you don't have to go from the middle, but I always try and go from the middle no matter what size of project I'm working on when I'm quilting. Because if it becomes a habit to do it all the time, I will do it all the time. So when I get my big quilts and do them, it will happen. But take it to where you want it, in the middle. Although the feed dogs won't be taking it and this darning foot just glides on the top, you still need to lower your foot. So lower your foot. You can either use the hand wheel and turn it once or if you've got the facility to drop your needle and then pick it back up again. While you're holding the, the top thread cotton and then just slightly pull on it and you'll see that the bottom thread comes through. Now started it, pull it all the way through so your bottom thread is on the top together with your top thread and then drop your needle in the work in your project. Take a couple of stitches more or less in the same place and that helps to tie off the ends of these threads and then just go for it and can you see yeah just go for it and move the work because it's up to you you don't have to go fast you don't have to go slow you go at a speed that is comfortable for you if you have a speed selector and it's your first time of doing any of this then put it on its slowest one until you find out. But Let's get pull these threads out of the way now. In fact, I think I'll snip them off. And there's little unicorns on here. I'm just going to pick out a few of them and go round them and that's it, that's all there is but we'll just see and take it nice and slow and easy Whenever you stop to take out a pin reposition your hands or anything make sure your needle is in the down position with this machine uh, I have an up down setting so it will stop where I want it to do either up or down uh, on my vintage machine that I used to do all my quilting on I used to have to turn the hand wheel and get it sorted but just go nice and slow There's no race, there's no rush. This is just to get you 
used to moving your hands around. See, my hands are getting out of position now, so I've stopped, reposition, go again. And when you're doing circles, try not to wang it round because that'll pull your tension out. But we'll just carry on doing this now. Now, if you want, there's no uh, harm in you stopping, repositioning your work. You don't have to because you can go in any direction. But it's easier to see where you're going <laughs> rather than looking behind your sewing machine all the time. When you get close to an edge, be careful. See, I've noticed now that I've missed out at there. You can see, oh, I'm round there as well. Never mind, I'll get to it later. Let's get to it in this bit now. see it's starting to quilt if you're having a light from the side it's better because it shows the ups and down curves right where am I going let's go down there don't have to use pins, you can buy um, wadding, batting that um, has got a self adhesive side, I never abuse it myself, uh, you can buy the spray adhesive, never use that myself, I always thought it would work out cheaper to get used to pins rather than buying cans of spray which is no good for the environment anyway so why not pins that I can use again and again and again turn it so I can see where I've been and done and where I need to go to next No particular pattern at all, I am just going around these unicorns. So rather than going on plain fabric and you, you're having to think where to go, it may be helpful to just have a little pattern like this.
there's no rule to this pattern so uh, as here I cross over my stitches because I wanted to because I thought it might help it look better turn it again and we've done over half of it see how quick and easy it was now at the end so just do a few stitches lift your needle and pull your work out cut your threads and there it is all done hopefully you can see better and the back I used brown thread with pink on top in some places I've gone too fast round and but there aren't any pockets or anything like that tucks sewn into it so the tension was out but that's what you can do is play around and that's all I want you to do was play around with this peace bye